If you're looking for a more advanced training in using the WebEx webinar tool, then you definitely come to the right place. I'm gonna cover a number of features. I'll put a list on the screen now so that you can see it. But to highlight some of the most interesting things, we're gonna look at creating virtual backgrounds, how you can even have your own background as a choice, how you can add captions, uh, like subtitles at the bottom when you're speaking, which can be really useful. Non-native speakers, if they're gonna be watching you, notifications, enabling breakout rooms for students, uh, putting students into breakout rooms manually. So lots of different features, polls of course, so lots and lots of different features that people often want to know once they've learned the basics. Now I do have a quite detailed introductory course into using WebEx that does take you up to a, a good intermediate level. So this really is part two of that course and if you are interested in part one, it's on the screen now. We're gonna focus on part two. Really quickly, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do all these different things really hope you like the video and as always if you do please like it please share it please comment on it and of course join me on my youtube channel don't forget to click on the bell so you get the notifications let's get started one last thing many people ask me how i make my videos i use camtasia if you want to try it out there's a link to test it for free in the description. You can also buy it with a discount. I've provided a link there. And there's also a free six part course that will take you through everything in how Camtasia works. And I'll also put that in the description. So the first thing I wanna do is focus on the record button. Now you can set the recording to automatic. In other words, you can do that when you create the room. You can actually set the room up so that automatically the recording start. And if any of you have watched my first video, I went through that and I do suggest that you do that because so many times I forget to record my session. But if you click here, notice that you do have a couple of options. First of all, you can save to the cloud and it's very easy afterwards to find your video and I'll quickly show you in a minute where you will find your recordings. So that's one option or you do have the option, of course, to save to your computer. Now, if you save to your computer, what you will then need to do afterwards, of course, is upload the video somewhere so that you can then obviously share it with your students. So you would upload it to Moodle or upload it to Blackboard or upload it onto YouTube or put it onto some kind of video repository. So you have both options. Now, let me quickly just show you if you do record to the cloud where you will find your recording. And just one last thing as well, if you turn on the record button, okay, and I'm starting to record now, at any point you can pause. So if you have a break, then it's easy for you to pause the recording while you're in the break. And then of course, remember to turn your, or to resume the recording when you wanna continue. And this is my problem often, I forget to do that. Now, just to point out, if you come down to recordings, all your recordings are here. So I'm logged into my account. I can see all my recordings and it's very easy. You literally just click on this button over here. And then if you click on it, you'll notice it provides you with a link to the recording and the password. And of course, you can then share that with your students. Now, you can actually set up breakout rooms before you even start your meeting. So in the preparation stages, when you're setting everything up, you are able to enable breakout rooms so that they're available as soon as you come into the room. But it doesn't really matter because if you click down here and click on this button here, you will enable breakout rooms and you'll see then suddenly uh, they're immediately available to you. And suddenly there's a new button here on your screen where you can uh, work with breakout rooms. Now there are a number of things about breakout rooms that we will come back and look at later on in this video. But that's really, really important to understand that don't worry if you didn't create your breakout rooms before the meeting, because you can actually do it on the fly while you're in the meeting. Now, if we click on the breakout rooms, and we kind of know that um, there are some interesting options for us here. And one of them that we didn't look at in the introductory video or the, the first video, which is actually quite detailed, is that we can assign participants manually. So I'm gonna create three breakout rooms, but I'm gonna choose this option here. And then I'm gonna click on create breakout rooms. This actually doesn't mean the breakout rooms are activated. It's just gonna create them. 
Now, the way that this works then is that you've got your breakout rooms, but obviously there is nobody in them. All of your students would be here. And what you would do is you would click on assign. So let's go to breakout room one and I click on assign and then it gives me the names of all the students and I'm gonna say, right, Tom Brown, I want Tom Brown in room one, okay? So I can do that and then what I would go is to room two and the same thing, assign and then there'd be other students' names here and I would just click on them and that person would be immediately assigned to that room. So if you do want to uh, create your breakout rooms manually, it is possible to do that. Now I think you're gonna find the next setting very exciting. If you come down here and click on the left, you'll notice that you are able to turn on subtitles. And you can now notice that as I'm speaking, everything has been written out. Now you're not only limited to one language when you do this as well, you do have actually other languages that you can work from. But obviously I'm speaking in English and this can obviously be very useful if you're working with um, a group of students, for example, um, who are who don't speak English as, as their first language. So you might decide that you want to make sure that they are able to see exactly what is on the screen. And you do have that option and it may be something that you're interested in doing. Now, while I'm running this session, I'm gonna turn that off. And to turn it off, I would just click on it again. And now it's turned off. But you do have that option. It's very easy to access. And I think it's a feature that particularly if you've got non-native speakers in your group might be something that you would consider doing. Now the next thing I want to make or point out is that you do and you can have a virtual background and you can play around with this virtual background. So if I click on start video and apologies because I'm just using the simple webcam on my computer here. So the quality isn't very good, but you can see that there is a background behind me. And where do I find those backgrounds? Well, if you come up to video and audio and you click on video settings, then in video settings, you want to come down to background. You'll notice that you have a number of backgrounds. So for example, this one here is sort of like an office scene. Uh, we've got a one here that looks more like a front room. We've got a blurred background. So you do have the choice of working with different backgrounds. So just to show you, if I was to click on this one and apply it, suddenly now, to close this down, you'll see that I've got this background here that's completely different. Now it is possible also, and I will show you this now, to upload your own background. So let's just have a quick look at how you would do that. Now you might find this interesting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my own background. So I'm gonna come back again to audio video, come down to video settings. And in fact, just to point out here, you can do that almost immediately. You can actually click on this button, change virtual background. It's gonna bring you to the same page. We're gonna click on the plus button and then we're gonna go up to my library and then we're gonna to go to my pictures. And then I'm gonna to go to something that I've got here called motion backgrounds, but I have a couple of static ones as well. So I'm looking for teacher training videos background. There it is. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to open it. Now one thing, a little tip, try to use a background that is full screen. Um, so the image that I used there was 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels and now I'm going to apply that and you'll see now if we just come back and turn on the uh, video that now I've got the background of my company. Now notice something here that it's actually backwards and uh, if you find that there is a way of dealing with that and I'm going to quickly show you how to do that now. All you need to do is come up to here again, down, oh, down to video settings, and this time what I want you to do is click turn off mirror my image, okay? And you should find now that I am sitting in front of my website as an example. Just a really quick break from the video. If you do like what you're seeing and you want more free videos, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. You'll find loads of stuff. There's a whole menu system here right at the top, all the different videos I make. It's all basically technology for education, though I specialize really in the use of technology in language education, but there's videos on Zoom and there's videos on screen capture and Camtasia, Snagit, and many tools that 
we use in education. Now, the other thing is, if you want to follow my work, sign up to the newsletter. There is a free 14-part course at the moment if you sign up that you will be sent to you. You get sent about one video every two or three days. There are no tricks. I try to highlight as many free tools as possible. And of course, you get updated on all the latest blog posts, the latest courses, the webinars, etc. You can also find out about my courses here. And of course, if you do want to contact me about doing any training, with your organization then you can contact me from this website thank you very much let's get back to the video now so one thing that a lot of teachers like to do is to create polls click here and you've got polling now what you need to do is to create a question now the one thing to keep in mind is when you create a poll couple of things actually first of all you can save your polls and then you can use them again and again but a poll can have several questions you're not limited to just one question so for example if I click on new and at the moment I've got multiple choice single answer click on new straight away it's ready for me to put in my first question so let's add another question we'll choose the multiple answers okay same thing again make your selection click on new write your question which of these technologies do you use? Let's just put in a couple of answers. So press enter, let's write Zoom, sorry wrong spelling, Zoom, enter, Word, enter, PPT, enter, WebEx, enter, Camtasia, enter. Okay, and then we'll do one last one. We'll click on this one, short answer. And we'll click on new and say what technology do you use most and this is an open-ended question so there's no options simple as that now once we've done our questions how do we share our poll just a couple of things before we share our poll you, it's very simple you just click on that button there open poll but just just to point out click on options and I like this because it tells the students, it displays the, the poll, for example, for just a maximum of five minutes, and that gives them a, a countdown and tells them how long. So I would click on OK on that. When you want to share the poll, just click on Open Poll, and that poll will now be open to the students. And you'll see here that immediately as people start voting, it will give, uh, give you an indication of who's answered the questions and who hasn't. Once you finish, you can click on close poll. And if you want the students to see the results on their screens, then click here. Now, something really important. You may want to save your poll and you can do that very easily. So if we come up to the top, in fact, there's an easy way of doing this. If you click on new poll, this is the quickest way. It's a kind of weird way, really. But anyway, you click on new poll. It's going to say, you do you want to save the poll questions? And I'm going to say yes. Now, what I've done on my computer is I've already created a folder called WebEx Polls. I'm going to click in there and I'm going to call this technology poll and give it a good name because then if you ever want to use it again in the future, then you can go there and just simply and then click on and also, if you want to, you can save the poll results. And that's also another good idea. Uh, we're going to put that in the same place. Poll results. And then again, I'm going to call this technology so that I know which uh, results that it's links to, just in case I want to analyze the results afterwards. So that's really useful. Now, the other thing about that is that, of course, if ever you want to open a poll, you just click there, choose the poll you want to open. So, for example, I'm going to click on this one here click on open and it will open onto the screen. So very useful to save your polls. Now I think this is a really important setting. There are various ways that you can access this, but I wanna just point this out. Come up to participants. Often when you're in a session, you will want this turned on. Anyone can share, particularly when you put students into breakout rooms, you might want them to screen share while they're in breakout rooms. Now, if you haven't got that selected, in other words, past participants can't share, then obviously it means that um, your students will be working in breakout rooms. That's fine. They can still communicate with each other, but they won't be able to share their screens during the breakout rooms. So you may find that at certain points in the session, you need to put that on. Now, often what I do is I turn that on when I move my students into breakout rooms. Uh, when they come back out of breakout rooms, then 
if you can, try to remember to turn that off because often you don't want your students to be screen sharing or have the option to screen share while you're presenting. Now it is possible, and again, this is a setting that you set before you even create your session, to make students wait in the lobby before you let them in. And if we click now on the participants list, you'll see that I've actually got a student waiting in the, in the lobby. And you can notice that I have the option to either let them in or to remove it, that person, okay? So this can be really nice because what happens is you log into the system, but your students are all waiting in the lobby and then you can choose the moment when you want to let them in. And this gives you time to get everything organized. If you've forgotten to turn on or to, for example, to activate breakout rooms, then it gives you the chance to do this, maybe to get set up with, oh, you're gonna let participants share or not, all those kind of things, you can do them first. And then when you're ready, the button that you click on is this one in here, let in. And now that student will come into the breakout room. Oh, sorry, not the breakout room, will come into, now that student will come into the main room. Now, if we come up again and we go to meeting and we're going to go to meeting settings, you'll notice actually this is the same kind of window as if I went to audio and clicked on video settings. It just simply, these are all different settings for different, different things. And the one I want to focus on now is this one, notifications. And you'll notice that I've got everything turned off. Uh, this is because it, I find it really annoying if I keep hearing all these bells and sounds while I'm presenting. So my feeling is turn them off. Obviously, that's up to you. Okay, so for example, if a student raises their hand, maybe you want to hear a bell. Or if someone leaves the meeting, you may want to hear a bell. I find these really kind of disruptive. And so I turn them all off. Other teachers like them, you may choose to have one or two on. For example, the raise your hand one could be handy. If, if for example, you've got a lot of students and maybe you don't notice that someone's raised their hands, okay? But that setting is a very useful one. Okay, so really hope you found that useful. And as I said, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads of content here along the top, but also you can just scroll down. Some of the more popular videos are on the front page. Remember, if you want to sign up to my newsletter, there's a 14 part video course in using technology in education. It's completely free. There are no tricks and nearly everything I focus on is free. If you do want to contact me, then you can contact me from the website. And I'm going to leave some videos on the screen now about other aspects of technology in education.